Hello there everyone, it's Carol from the Crafty Emporium. On my Facebook group I occasionally set challenges for everyone on the group so that they can be focused on working on something. If sometimes you get a little bit lost and you're not quite sure what to do with yourself. So I set these little challenges up as I say so that you can be a bit more focused. This time I've, I've turned the tables around and asked them to challenge me with five items that I have to make something but I did I have chosen one um so it's from Lisa and she chose one large card one envelope one piece of 12 by 12 paper or cardstock uh one piece of ribbon and one box of paper clips so this is what I've chosen let's go through the list one large card now I've been I've been a little bit ambiguous on the list. So I know that she probably meant a greetings card, but I've chosen a piece of coffee dyed A4 card. Okay, so one piece of coffee dyed card. Now I've got two here just to be on the safe side in case I need a little bit of a backup. One envelope. Now the envelope that I've chosen is actually a window envelope that came with one of my bills in. Again, being a little bit ambiguous because I've actually chosen four of these envelopes to make this project. But my envelope. One piece of 12 by 12 paper pad. So I chose one of the papers out of um, Tim Holt's Wallflower pack. And the one that I've chosen is this one here that's got all the insects and bugs and things on but I've also chosen this one as a backup just in case I need a little bit of extra for what I want to make so those are my two pieces of cardstock that I'm going to use pop that over there one piece of ribbon where's that gone oh I've dropped it on the floor <laughs> So uh, I've got some seam binding which I've already dyed and crinkled up. So that's my ribbon and one box of paper, paper clips. Well, I've actually chosen a bag and these were from the works and they're copper coloured paper clips and there's two sizes in there. So I've got those as well. So those are the items that I am going to be using to make this project. And so this is what I'm going to make. This is my prototype. I thought I'd better give it a go first to make sure that it did work out the, the idea that I'd got in my head. But it's made basically a little mini booklet made with the cardstock as the front cover and the envelopes form the pages. All right. Now it's going to be a little ephemera storage journal so that I can make a little library of these to be able to store the little pieces of ephemera that I make because sometimes, you know, it's difficult to store those things. So I'm going to use the window part to be able to see what, what I've actually got made and I've got a page set up here to be able to show you the idea of it. So I've made these paper flowers and I've put them into the front pocket. Now the, the envelopes themselves that form the pages make up a total of three pockets. So we've got one there, one in the middle and one on the back side. So what I thought I could do was put the made items in the front so that I can see what's in there. The middle pocket, I'm going to put a tag inside of it. And I'm going to write on there whose project I saw either on their blog, on Instagram, on YouTube, so that I've got a reference point if I want to go back and go and have another look, if I want to um, state who it was, if I do a video on it, then I've got the reference information here. And then in the third pocket, I'm going to keep some scraps of papers relating to the project that I've made so that if I want to make some more I've already got a little storage area for some of those bits and pieces that I can pull out make some more of those and top this back up and then on the back side here although my envelopes are plain in this version because as I say this was my prototype I'm going to put some writing paper on the back here and just jot down some notes of how I actually ended up making 
the items that are in the front of the envelope so that if I've forgotten, I can't find the link, whatever, I've got some reference notes here to um, show me how to make the items that I've made. But I thought it was a, a nifty little way of storing some of the smaller pieces of ephemera that we make and also keeping some papers to hand so that if I want to make some more, then I can do. So this is the prototype, as I say, of, um, of the little mini journal that I'm now going to show you how to make. So just a little bit of information about the envelopes that I'm using. These are ones that my bills come in and they've got a window. Now I've tried to choose all the same size envelopes and I've tried to choose them so that they've got a window here on the left hand side and so that I can fold them in half so that the window, do window doesn't encroach on the fold mat. Now, as you can see, this one's actually encroaching and so that could end up splitting. You also don't obviously want a window that's in the middle of the envelope either or on the right hand side, unless you've got them all so that they're on the right hand side. So I've chosen envelopes that are all of a similar sort of ilk and as I say, size. Now you don't have to go off the same size and you don't have to choose this size of envelope. Um, but it just makes it easier for a quicker project. The other thing that you need to be aware of as well is that once you've opened your envelope, um, you obviously need to stick the flap down. And so you place a little bit of glue on back on the edge of the flap, fold it back over and stick it down. Now we're going to be cutting the top side of the um, envelope off to be able to make access into our pockets but I'll come to that later on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just want to lightly coffee spray or lightly colour the front of the envelope. Now I don't need to do the back side because that's going to be folded in half and it won't be visible. So I just want to lightly colour this front part so that when I come to decorate it later, then um, I've got a little bit of a background to play with rather than this stark white and all this printing on it. So I've roughly cut up a piece of scrap paper that I'm just going to sit on top of the window itself because I don't want that sprayed. And then this is my little spray bottle that I keep for, normally put my tea in it. Um, for for dyeing my papers but in actual fact what I've got in here was I'd come to the end of my um, re-ink bottle for my distress ink pads and so what I did was I put water in the re-ink bottle um, to get all the excess out the the little tiny drops that were left and I've, I've dumped it in this spray bottle so this is going to be much stronger I've got my silicone mat down so that I've got a little bit of protection and I've also got some kitchen roll here to just mop up some of the excess. So I'll just get that to hand. So I'm just going to lightly spray and then I'm going to dab some of the excess off. And then shake it up again, spray over some of those areas that I might have missed a little. Just dab it again with the kitchen towel. And then I'm going to remove the window bit and it doesn't matter. I'm not bothered about this little white window frame around here, but it now just gives my envelope a little bit of interest and colour. And then I'm going to put that to one side to dry. And then in true Blue Peter style, and for our American friends who don't know about Blue Peter, it's a program that we used to watch as kids and they always used to have a little bit of a craft section in it where they used to make stuff. Um, and they always had the demonstration piece and then pieces that they'd made earlier. So here's some envelopes that I did earlier that I've already pre-sprayed. Um, varying sort of depths of colour. Now I did actually spray the backs because I forgot <laughs> that I didn't need to do it. But those are the ones that I've already done. 
So the next part now is to fold this in half. So I'm just going to fold it so that the back is actually going to be on the inside and then I'm just going to finger press. So I'm going to fold that in half and I'm going to do that and I'll have four pages in this book and not three as I did in my prototype. So two, there's three and obviously my fourth one is drying off. So that's those done. So this is the envelope that I sprayed at the beginning and I've already folded it in half just as a, the same as I have done with the other three and I'm now going to cut the top edge off to be able to open it up to, to make the pockets. So I'm just going to trim across and you can use a paper trimmer or your scissors to just trim a little thin slither off the edge of the envelope. Make sure that no, I didn't get right the way through. Tried to do it a touch too thin. Look, a little bit further down. There we go. Now, when I open it up, one of the things that can happen is these parts of the flaps don't always stick down very well. So. I've got a little bit of flappy flap so I'm just going to go through each of the envelopes and make sure that they're all stuck down by just adding a tiny touch of glue to just hold that in place now I've got all my pages ready I can now start to glue them down by opening them back up and just putting glue down one of the long sides and across the bottom on one half of the envelope so that I can then close it back up and it's now a closed page with all three pockets one, two, three pockets now all ready to use and I'll do that with each of these envelopes that I've got ready. The next step then is to create the hinges and the hinges are one inch wide strips of card so that's my, where my cardstock comes into play and I've cut them to one inch wide and I've cut them to the same height as my envelopes so they're exactly the same height as the envelopes. I've creased them down the middle folded them in half and I've just tapered the top and bottom edge of that strip so that it's just cut at a slight angle to just make it a little bit neater and now I'm going to attach them to the envelopes themselves. So I'm now going to start to join the pages together by putting the hinges on. So I've got two of my envelopes stacked on top of each other and I'm going to open them out as though I'm opening up a book and I'm going to put attach one hinge to join these two envelopes together. Now I want the folded edge of the hinge on the edge of the envelope. So I'm just going to put a line of glue on the edge of the envelope here. And I'm going to stick the hinge on top with that folded edge against the edge of the envelope. And now I'm going to put glue on the back side of the hinge. And I'm going to flip this one over and sit it on top. Making sure that it's all butt up against this edge here. So I'll bring in the next page. So I'm going to touch the hinge to this side by putting a line of glue on the edge of the envelope and have the folded edge on the right so that it's butt up to the edge of the envelope. And I'm going to place glue on the back side of the hinge 
get my next page, flip it over and sit it on top. Making sure that they're all lined up nice and neatly. So that's all my pages now hinged together. But I need to put a hinge on the front and on the back side so that I can then attach them to the cover. So I'm going to put some glue on the hinge. And then that will then have the folded edge against the edge of the envelope. So that I've now got a hinge on the front of the envelopes and one also on the back and now all my pages are all hinged together so now I can make the front cover now I'm going to make the front cover and this is just something that you might want to consider when I measured the depth of my envelopes they actually measured six and a quarter inches long which means that when I come to make the cover I can only get one cover piece out of one sheet of 12 by 12 so I've had to use um, two different 12 by 12 papers now if I had cut my envelopes down across the top up here so that they measured less just fractionally less than six inches I would have got my cover pieces out of one sheet of card as it happens I could still cut them at this stage but I'm just going to leave them as they are and just use the two different pieces so the height of my pieces of card are fractionally longer than the height of the envelope so as i say my envelopes measured six and a quarter inches high so i've actually cut the height of my card to six and a half inches high now the width of the envelopes comes to four and a half inches wide now what i want to do with the front cover is i want to fold this in half and then attach it onto the hinge that I've created so I need the width measurement twice plus a little extra so I've got a little overhang here right on the edge so I've actually cut the width of this down to nine and a half inches so what I'm going to do is as I say I'm going to fold it in half so that that will now have the hinge sat on that side there and then I'm going to glue this to that so I actually want to open up that hinge piece and put some glue on it see if I can hold it steady just gonna spread it about a bit so I don't want it oozing out Okay, and I'm going to not fold it over completely, just fold it over a little bit. And then I'm going to open up my piece of card and I'm going to sit it on top of the envelope and then fold that flap over onto what will be the inside edge. Okay, then I'm going to put glue all over the face of this piece of card here so it will then stick to the that side over there now one of the things that i could do is i could just put glue down this side here and down the bottom so that when i close it i've got a pocket at the top of the page in fact let's do that i think it uses less glue as well doesn't it so i'm just going to put it down that edge and across that bottom edge and then I'm going to fold it over so 
so that that now makes my front cover and then I'm going to flip it over to the back and I'm going to do the same on the back so I've cut another piece out that measures six and a half by nine and a half but remember that that's for my size of envelopes you may need to um, do a different measurement and again I'm just going to finger press it down that is going to sit inside that hinge area there so I, I want to open up the hinge and put some glue on that edge sit the cover on make sure I've got it the right way around yeah And then I'm going to fold that over on top. Spin it round so I can put the glue on easier. And put it along the edge there. that edge there and I can fold that over okay so I've now got a cover on the front my pages and then a cover on the back the other thing that I did was this bottom edge here was I lined up the bottom edge of the cover roughly with the bottom edge of the envelopes so it means that if I stand it up on a shelf it's all roughly the same level if I did it too low down then the covers are actually supporting the weight of the contents of the envelopes now if I turn it on its spine side you can see the edge where all the envelopes are all hinged I could cover that over what I could do is I could cut a piece of card to the same height so that's six and a half inches and I've cut the width to two and a half inches wide now I could border punch the edges of this card and then I would stick it on the front now I'm not going to fold it what I'm going to do is curl it round and stick it on the back so that there's some on the front and some on the back. Now the reason that I don't want to fold it and have a hard crease is I want to allow some space within there for those envelopes to manoeuvre. I am going to add two brads. So I'm going to poke a hole in that top corner and one in the bottom corner and one in that one and one in that one so I've poked four holes and then if I get four brads out one, two, three and that, is that the same size now? different size Right. I've got some really big bulky, well bigger, bulkier type brads. So if I add those and can you see I've splayed them out? So, sort of at a funny angle so rather than going top bottom or side side because that will form an overhang so I've actually just split them at a slightly funny angle okay and then from the front side I'm just going to push these down in fact let me just use a flat my scissors to just squidge them down can you see look there's a slight very slight overhang there so I just need to push that one in There we 
go. And just pushing it down with my scissors like this will just help to flatten it a little on the back. Okay, so I'm going to add glue on the side here because that will go on the front. And I'm putting about a half inch width of glue on there. And then I'm going to stick it on the front. And I'm overlapping the front by about three quarters of an inch. And then I'm just going to curl this round. Put some glue on the back. And again, about a half inch width of glue. And then curl it round to the back. I'm just going to clip those together again. Just hold it in place until the glue takes. But hopefully you can see now, look, there's a gap. So where it's curled round, there's a gap inside of there between the edge of the card and the actual envelopes themselves. And just take that off so you can get a, can you see the gap? Okay, now Lisa wanted me to use some ribbon. Now not everyone has um, the eyelet punch. An eyelet setter so I'm just going to make my own with some card and then on the inside cover if those out of the way a minute so on this inside back cover put a pencil I'm just going to punch a hole and then I'm going to add these two little eyelet rings if my glue wants to play there we go I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it there and I'm going to wrap it round the front and then let it slip down there so I want that sort of length and a little bit extra and then I'm going to fold it in half because I want twice the length so how much have I got there Round about a metre. So I'm going to put the loopy end from the front through to the back. Open up the loop and then put the loose ends through the loop. 
and then pull it away and then I should be able to wrap that round and then that will sit under there and of course what I can do is I can attach something metal on the end of there to just give it a little bit of weight to hold it in place and we'll open it up I don't want to force the spines or anything yet because the glue hasn't quite taken off but this is the little envelope journal and it's front and back cover now the last thing she asked me to use was if I can find them there we go the paper clips I've actually got some of this bit of the paper left over and these are split into sections so I could cut a section off place it underneath there So I've placed it in between the two pieces of paper clip and then I could fold that edge over and stick that down I mean there's many ways to decorate a paper clip this is just me trying to be quick with a little something so that I'm using everything that she asked me to in the challenge putting a bit of pressure on there to hold it in place and then I could type out a word and put a word on there so let's just say I was putting roses in this one I could put the word roses or handmade flowers on there and then paper clip that to the top edge of the page and I could stagger them on each of the individual pages so that I know what's in each one but also with the paper clip it now closes it up at the top so it prevents anything from falling out so that could be a little thing that you could attach with the paper clips and then of course it's up to you then you can decorate each of these pages as you so wish as I say I'm going to rip out some lined paper <coughs> excuse me so I've got this lined paper here and I'm going to rip some I'm just going to use my ruler so I've now got a little bit of a jagged edge there measure the length so down to that line there rip a little bit off this edge and then I could attach that onto the back side of the envelope and I could write some instructions on there and I could do that on each of these individual pages and it helps to cover over sort of what's on the back of the envelopes 
Now with the front of the envelopes, and especially with this one, as you can see, there's a lot of writing on there, and there's even writing on the inside. So again, I could just use a piece of paper, decorative, scrap piece, lined, and I could stick that on the inside of the envelope. And then with any of the leftover papers, that you've got from cutting down your journal covers you could use these to cover over any little bits that are on the top so just as a for instance I could cut that one out and stick that onto there and it just ties the theme in I could add that one onto there I could leave that important information enclosed and it just helps to decorate the page up a bit but that's entirely up to you if you want to do that so Lisa I hope that that is what you were expecting from me um, but there's my little ephemera storage journal and I could make a series of those and put different little things inside each of them and as I say, the materials as well, so that if I wanted to top up and make some more, then I could do. And that's all then kept in one spot. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.